All right, let's retire this armor and let's put on our full set of diamond gear. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Xenocorps here and welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore. This is episode four and we are in full diamond and we are going to go hunting for ancient debris because we are going to definitely need netherite if we are going to survive in this series. So that's my main goal for today, is to get some netherite. Now, according to the Minecraft wiki, I've been going about it the wrong way. After not finding anything for quite a while, I discovered that it doesn't generate just anywhere. It generates below a certain level of the nether. Also, we're in 20W15A, meaning that we've got a new biome, the nether delta. So we'll have to go see if we can't find, or the Basalt Delta. We'll have to see if we can't go find that. But if you look, we're at layer 81. So we are in an area that can generate netherite. However, it's very rare. As in the average is about 1.7 blocks per chunk. Oh, I'm not wearing any gold. I'm not wearing any gold. And there's a hoglin there. Man, they spawn in here? Come back here, you little hoglin. Uh-oh. Oh, he's coming after me. This ain't good. Oh, he's got a crossbow. There you go. So we got some gold stuff. I'm just gonna wear this gold just to keep me safe from piglins. And so what I can see here is that it's most common from layer 8 to 22. So we've got to dig quite a ways down in order to get to where this stuff generates. Alright, so somehow, some way, we're going to have to get down there. Meaning we're going to need some gravity blocks in order to get down there. So there's a good area to drop down from. In fact, we could go even deeper right over there. Tell you what, why don't we actually build to this netherwort tree, and we can get down from here. Ooh, that's a hoglin. Ooh, nice one, guys. Good job. Nice haul. Okay. So let's get down. And we're most likely going to have to dig down below lava. Okay. Now, is this a floating island over the lava lake? I think it might be. So, I kind of want to bridge across. Oh! Wait, what? How did I just do that? Wait, can you accidentally do that? I hope to god not! Did you guys see that? That's kinda scary. Alright guys, so it took us a minute, but we are here. Layer 8. The lowest netherite will generate. And the highest it generates is, I believe... All the way up to level 119. So, but it is most common because it generates one vein between level 8 and 22 per chunk. So, if we use the chunk border lines here, you can see here is a chunk border right here. We got a border line here and here, so I'm just use this to mark a border. And I'm just going to dig straight by the border here until we reach the border of this chunk here. There it is. So in this particular chunk that I've highlighted with these torches, this stuff will generate at least one time on this layer here. In this chunk. So we've just got to go up with it to find this thing. So. Let's start excavating and see what we can't find. Because we've got a long, a lot of digging to do. Oh, guys, guys, look! There's our very first ancient debris! 
Oh my gosh, it's right on the corner of the chunk. Oh, that's so unlucky. Oh my goodness. Okay, well. Let's pick this thing up. Oh, there's more! We got two ancient debris, guys. Oh my goodness, our very first netherite. Oh my goodness. I hollowed out this entire area, four blocks tall, and it generates on the edge of the chunk. Man, what are the odds? And since, since it generated one of the blocks over here as well, does that mean that that counts as that chunk's block as well? That's kind of nuts. Because according to the wiki, two, va two veins will generate per chunk. One vein of 1 to 3 will generate between levels 8 and 22 of a chunk. And that was a single block of ancient debris right here on the corner, meaning that there is one in there and one in here. So I'm guessing that's both veins of netherite for these two chunks between 8 and 22, which is kind of nuts. So I'm a little baffled. I dug this entire chunk up to layer 22 down to layer 8. And there wasn't a single piece of ancient debris. It generates per chunk. According to the wiki, two veins generate per chunk. One between level 8 and 22. I've dug the entire thing. And not a single piece of ancient debris has revealed itself to me in this entire chunk. And as you can see, I actually dug down to layer 7, and I actually dug up to layer 23. Well, it's up to 22, because that whole area is Lava Lake right there. So this is kind of weird. Because it's supposed to have generated at least one piece of ancient debris inside this general area. And it didn't. So I don't know if the wiki is off, or if there's a bug with generating netherite. Making my job ten times more difficult than it needs to be. Okay, forget the chunk borders. Looks like it's time to just start digging. Oh, hello, Ghast! Ha <laughs> ha ha! He spawned in this little section of Soul Sand Valley. Alright guys, so I've decided to take a break from mining because my pick almost died there, but I ended up coming back and I've smelted it into scrap. I need two more to make a single netherite ingot. I did some more bartering Got tons more crying obsidian, so we could actually do some crafting with this stuff in the near future. So let's see, what can we craft with crying obsidian? Let's see, we've got the respawn anchor, which is something that's definitely usable, but I don't know if it helps you respawn in hardcore, so I think it's almost like a useless item. And I think that's all it's really used for at the moment. So, kind of a wasted item. We got some more obsidian from bartering. Fire charges, more ender pearls, which we definitely need for going to the end. We actually have plenty of ender pearls now. We just need to go find blaze. And that's the hard part right now, is getting blaze. So, I'm focusing on trying to make sure I've got everything I need to fight said dragon, but we're gonna have to find ourselves a nether fortress here eventually. I've gotta figure out a way to get some XP to repair this pickaxe, so I think I'm gonna head down here to the zombie spawner and I'm gonna turn it into a farm really quick.
Silverfish. Ah! Silverfish. Silverfish. Okay. Well, that was rather interesting. Alright. That is a working zombie farm. I followed an Il Mango design with the trap door lever thing. Basically, it is a tripwire hook that runs across the top of the spawner and it increases the efficiency by knocking mobs that spawn off the top of the spawner. It just knocks them off the top of it. So it increases the efficiency by about almost 5% according to El Mango. And so it should be really efficient here and it looks like it's doing really well. We can also trade this rotten flesh now with our villagers. We can get a cleric and we can get some emeralds with rotten flesh. And this is an early way for me to get tons of XP, repair my tools, and get some emeralds so we can do some more trades. So this should be a really nice thing. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to AFK for a while, and I'll see you guys in a bit. So I've been doing a ton of work, just getting some XP up. I enchanted this, this, and this. So I've got a really good... Sword, it doesn't have Unbreaking 3, but because it's got Mending, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. Because you get XP for everything you slay. So I think it's not that big a deal. Plus we got Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 4 on this axe. So we're doing pretty good. We've got a lot of good gear set up. I also don't know why the enchantment glint doesn't show on the armor anymore. It might be a new rendering engine bug. But for now... We are pretty much done with the zombie farm. It is still down there, but it's working. I set up a little hopper and a chest to collect the items as I killed them. And this thing has just made it so much easier. We just could with the sweeping edge three, it is so nice. So I think I'm gonna take this pickaxe back to the nether after I empty out my inventory again. And we're gonna try ourselves one more time to get some more netherite material because we need more netherite scrap so we can actually get started getting some netherite goods. And the good thing is, netherite with a smithing table transfers enchantments. So I'm not gonna lose these enchantments with a smithing table. So if I have, let's see what I do with it. If I have two more netherite scrap, I can convert this into a netherite pick and keep all of the enchantments on it. That's gonna be amazing. So let's head over to the nether, which is actually over here. And let's get ourselves some more netherite scrap. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Man, I've been getting unlucky with the size of the veins, but man. We're, we're getting, we're definitely getting some ancient debris with this new technique I've been trying out. What I've basically been doing... Jeez. Uh, what I've basically been doing is at layer 16... So, which is between 8 and 22. I've just been digging 3x3 three three tunnels. Down long periods of, you know, winding areas instead of digging out the entire chunk. Because I've just showed that it didn't generate a single vein of netherite, or ancient debris rather, in this entire space between 8 and 22. Which it says on the wiki it should. So I'm not sure if there's a bug with generation or... Somehow this chunk got glitched. I don't know. But the point being, this was this whole chunk was supposed to generate at least one ancient debris, and it didn't. So I decided to go ahead and do branch mining, but make it a little bit larger than normal by making the tunnels 3x3. Three three. And since the veins can be as small as just a single block, mining them only one block wide. So we can see the tops and the bottoms a lot easier as well because you know ancient debris could technically generate underneath there and you wouldn't see it so you're lessening the amount that you can you know not see by just digging one block spaced tunnels so I'm spacing it out as much as possible mining quartz as I go to regenerate my pickaxe because this just does a number on it if you don't have unbreaking you are definitely going to run through your picks really quick while doing this process but it's what I have found to be the most effective so far because I have found a total of six in the past like 20 minutes 
of me mining this stuff. And I found the first two in the course of an hour and a half. So this is definitely significantly faster and increases your chances if you're just mining at a certain layer between 8 and 22. Uh, preferably somewhere between because that's what the wiki says specifically is somewhere between. So you'll definitely be able to find ancient debris as you dig along if you keep going this way and just using this branch mining method because it's working for me. So hopefully I can find some more ancient debris, but I've got enough ancient debris to make two netherite ingots whenever we get back to the house. So we can definitely upgrade a couple pieces to netherite. And that is my goal, is to upgrade some tools and weaponry to netherite. Oh man, we got a ton of ancient debris with that trip. That, that's, that's amazing. I'm actually really excited. Because now, along with the gold ore that's super easy to get down there, we're going to be able to craft ourselves our very first pieces of netherite gear. Now let me show you guys how we do this. So we're going to craft ourselves a smithing table. And we're going to just chuck this thing down. Look out, buddy. Still haven't named you yet. Nobody's come up with a name for you. I wonder if anybody's going to come up with a name for you this time. If you guys got a name suggestion, let me know. So all I've got to do is stick this thing in here and it'll upgrade it. Now I probably should repair it first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that's awesome. Let's craft ourselves two netherite ingots. Oh boy. This stuff is rare. Holy crap. And I think I'm gonna demonstrate this with the looter. Oh my god. A netherite sword. Oh, this is going to be sick. It does ten and a half attack damage. Oh my goodness. And once I repair this thing, we can have the item duper be even stronger because it's going to be netherite. That's awesome! I'm not going to get any netherite armor because I want to make sure it's enchanted first. I actually believe that netherite's enchantability is worse than diamond, meaning that you get better chances for better enchants on diamond than you do with netherite. So it's best if you enchant it first and then convert it over to netherite. So I'm going to go down to the zombie farm here, repair this pick, and then, yes, we'll make it netherite. Okay, we just mended it all up. Let's go turn this thing into a netherite pick. Oh boy. We have our first two items of netherite gear. Right there. That's really cool. Man, it's, it's nice. The very first netherite items I've ever gotten. Oh, this is cool. I think it's time for one last thing to do in the nether. Ooh. Scary, scary place. I think I'm going to go on the hunt for a nether fortress. I'm feeling a little bit more confident in myself. I got protection 4 on my pants. And I've got fire protection 4 on my chest plate and protection 2 on my helmet. So I am in a much better place than I was. Bam. I'll take that. Ooh. That gave me the looting off of that sword because of that. That was actually kind of cool. Four gas tears. And blue fire. Nice. So with my new sword and new abilities, I think I'm going to go hunting another fortress, see if I can't find it. Because I desperately need... Ah! Leave me alone. I desperately need to find me a fortress. Why do I never bring any gold items with me at all? Oh man. This update is beautiful and terrifying. Whew! Oh no! I 
think I just found a basalt delta. Problem is, how the hell do I get to it? That is definitely a basalt delta. Oh buddy, you about to fall. Oh, he despawned. Okay. Oh my gosh. We've made it to the Basalt Delta. This is the new biome! Holy crap. I want some of this Blackstone, but I'm worried about that Hoglin. Well guys, this is it. The Basalt Delta. The new biome they added in this snapshot and I must say, it's beautiful. And Blackstone? An amazing block to build with. This is just phenomenal. <laughs> I love the particle effects so much. This is, this is phenomenal. I am just... My jaw is just to the freaking floor right now. The particle effects, the transitions, it's so perfect. This this is the update Minecraft really needed. This is taking Minecraft to the next level, for sure. This update is absolutely phenomenal. I am so glad I decided to just start playing this update. I was so anxious and giddy and ready to play this update. And here I am. And it's phenomenal. It's everything I expected. And it's it's just phenomenal. I mean the ambience that you're listening to just they went into so much detail. To get this right, to get it to feel right, to look right, this is absolutely amazing. It's incredible to look at. Everything Mojang is doing is phenomenal right now. And it, it really shows how much care they have for this game. I could, if this place wasn't completely, utterly dangerous, I would, I would live here. There's a lot of hoglins here. Gosh, my armor is taking an absolute beating. Oh no, I am definitely not headed the right direction. But holy crap, here's more of the basalt delta. Ow! Ugh. Those guys do a lot of damage. Hi there! <laughs> this is not a good place to be. Uh. Oh god! Around the corner, up the hill. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Guys, I found a warped forest. Oh, I am utterly lost. But this is one of the places I did want to find. Because I need warped nilium. Alright, I think I'm getting rather close here. Ooh. Oh, fuck! Okay! That got a little exciting really quickly. I see my portal! It's across the way! Oh! Oh, gotcha, bitch! <laughs> well, that was kind of scary. No luck with the Nether Fortress. But we did find the new nether biome 
that came out this update. That's pretty cool. And we didn't die. That's also that's also pretty cool. Let's let's get out of this place. Ugh. Good old overworld. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah, power four, unbreaking three. It's actually exactly what I wanted because I've got an infinity book in here that I want to use. Yes, you. And, excuse me, sir. No, ex okay, thank you. Infinibu. There we go. We've got some really good tools set up in this episode. We just got an infinity bow. So that's nice. We now have a very safe way of dealing with mobs from a distance. That's going to be huge. We also have the sword and the pickaxe, both netherite. This this is going better than I ever thought it would, and I am loving the nether update so, so much. Alright, so today's comment question of the day comes to us from Mr. or Miss RDD3 Dillard, who asks, question, how long do you think you will survive? And, you know, that's a really good question. One that I am still asking myself every time I log on to this world. It's kind of a it's kind of a weird thing to play a hardcore world. Especially the longer you've been in a world. Because the longer you play a hardcore world, the closer you come to your inevitable demise. It's just that simple. That's the thing about hardcore that you've just got to grasp and understand before you get involved in a world like this because it's a regular Minecraft world and in an instant it could all be gone forever and you know that's that's the scary part dying is basically when this world ends you and you can't build on it anymore and so to be honest with you I have no clue how long I'm going to survive in this. I have no clue whatsoever. All I know is that I will play this world as long as I have this one life. But that's a really good question. Thank you. And that, I guess, ladies and gents, brings us to the end of this episode of Minecraft Hardcore. We got a lot done in today's episode. This is a much longer recording session than the past three episodes. The past three episodes have been sit down and record for two hours. This episode's recording time raw footage is roughly six to seven hours worth of footage. Mainly because I record every minute I'm in the world, like I have said in the past couple episodes. And I spent a lot of time grinding for netherite this episode. It is really, really rare. It's a lot harder to find than it seems. And I showed off a really quick way to find the stuff, but you're still digging for several, several minutes. It is super rare. According to the wiki, though, it's still less rare than emerald ore, but I find emerald ore more commonly than netherite because netherite generates in the nether and does not generate it it does not generate next to an air block, meaning you have to uncover it. That is what makes netherite so rare. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you want to ask me a question, leave a question down in the comments below. I'll try to get to everybody's question. No guarantees or no promises, though, especially as we get more and more people on the channel and more questions are asked. I might not be able to keep up with them. But until then, I will answer every question I see. So if your question didn't get answered this episode, I will definitely get to it in the next one. Or in one coming up, rather. Because there's no guarantee that yours is going to get answered in the next one. But, you know, if you ask a question, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload the next one. I try to upload this episode... Ow. I try to upload this series at least once a week. So, yeah. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. It's been fun. 
I love the Nether update so, so much. It's fantastic, and I love playing in this world. As scary as it is to be playing hardcore, knowing that like, everything could be gone in an instant, I'm still loving this so, so much. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You're awesome. Peace out, guys.